students how are you i hope you are fine in today's session we are going to discuss about some few more examples of the class reptilia and then we'll move to the another class that is class aves so uh, in class reptilia we have discussed many more characteristic features of the reptiles and we have seen few examples also few more examples we are going to discuss today that is the another example that is example number 5 crocodile so crocodile is a type it is also a reptile okay and this reptile have all the similar characters that of the other reptiles but and in addition to that they have some additional characteristic features such as they have they have four chambered heart chambered heart now what is the the significance about the four chambered heart that means they can regulate the double complete circulation within their body okay so it is a exceptional in case of the reptiles because although all the reptiles have the three chambered heart but the crocodile alligator okay they are having the four chambered heart the next they have they have thicodon dentation thicodon dentation means what the teeth they are uh, fixed within the jaw socket okay so they are not loosely or superficially arranged as we have seen other reptiles they show the uh, what we say kind of uh, acrodon type of uh, adjustment in the jaw socket but here we have the thicodon type of adjustment that means the tooth are fixedly placed under the jaw socket okay and as they are polyphyodon if they broke up then also they are capable of regenerating again and again okay so that is the special characteristic feature in the crocodile and other characteristic will be the similar as that of the reptiles okay the next another example that is snakes okay in snakes we will discuss about the cobra cobra so the scientific name of cobra or the snakes is the naja 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 okay that is the scientific name of the cobra now next let's see the characteristic of the cobra they have the tongue okay so you see the tongue when they flipper their tongue outside their buccal cavity okay or outside their mouth it is divided into two main uh, branches okay it has a branching type of uh, what we say tongue so we can call it that uh, it is a bifid okay so the tongue is is bifid okay bifid bifid in the sense what it is divided into two parts like this okay so such a structure is referred as the bifid okay and this is a flippering type of tongue so it can sense various type of uh, signals through the environment okay on the tongue there is there is a presence of certain receptors just as tango receptors are there okay so these receptors are responsible for sensing the physical senses okay the next they have they have jacobson's organ Jacobson's organ. Now, what is the function of Jacobson's organ? It helps in helps in sensing smell. Okay, it helps in sensing smell. How? As the uh, the tongue, okay, which consists of certain receptor, it will receive the smell. From the surrounding, and it will take to the buccal cavity. Within the buccal cavity, at the roof part of the buccal cavity, there is a presence of the sensing organ that is called Jacobson's organ. Okay, which help in sensing the type of smell. Okay, so that if they are showing any kind of predation type of movement, they can sense their predated prey. Okay, the next, their eyelids. Their, sorry. 
their eyelids are immobile okay that means their eyelid do not eyelids do not move at all okay so when we look after the snake it look like they are capturing our pictures okay it's not like capturing our picture it is a fake thing but their eyelids are immobile the next they have they have long or some long teeth some long teeth used to inject venom okay so they have some long teeth which are used to inject the venom okay and these long teeth are called as the called fangs these long teeth are also uh, are called as the fangs okay so fangs these are generally pointed teeth and the pointed teeth at the tip of the teeth there is a small opening okay and through that small opening they will release the what we say poison or the venom okay now the fangs can be can be polyphyodont or fangs are polyphyodont okay so that means when the teeth are broken down they will regenerate again and again that is the property which is seen in case of snakes okay so while catching the snakes also many snake friends they what they do uh, they remove the teeth of the snake but after some time it will again regenerate so that is the capability found in the snakes that is called polyphyodont okay then next they have poison glands poison glands now what are poison glands poison glands are actually modified salivary glands are modified salivary glands okay so the salivary glands as you can see i am drawing the structure of the fangs such a structure can be seen of the fangs okay which has a small opening at the tip and this fangs the consist of the duct okay inside there is a duct which is connected okay anteriorly there is a duct and posteriorly it is connected to the salivary gland in the buccal cavity of the snakes so whenever the poison or the salivary gland secretes the saliva or whatever the saliva it is poisonous venom okay will be released through the opening of the fangs okay so the venom the venom or the poison okay can be can be neurotoxic or hemolytic okay or yes hemolytic so the venom can be of two types neurotoxic means what it damages central nervous system okay so it damages the central nervous system and as we know central nervous system is most important part of the body as it is responsible for regulating various um, voluntary type of activities okay now here another is the hemolytic that means here there will be breakdown or the breakdown in the blood cells okay so it will cause a damage to the damages blood cells so generally what happens in hemolytic case when the snakes bite to the humans or any kind of animal okay at that time means the if the poison is hemolytic then it will form the clots and when these clots okay are formed there will be 
uh, stoppage in the transportation of the gases okay as well as transportation of the essential elements within the body so it may lead to the cardiac arrest okay or the stroke the next this is the venom okay and other snakes are also there we'll right here other snakes like we have the crate crates then viper then rat snake then rattle snake and python so these are the different types of snakes okay so this is general characteristic feature of the snakes okay so that is about the examples okay and uh, one more is there one more example is there we will write here that is example number 7 okay so these are the characters of other <coughs> the example is typhlina brahmina okay typhlina brahmina Okay, I play na Brahmina. So it is the smallest Indian snake. Okay, so the snake is smallest Indian snake. Okay, and they show a property called parthenogenesis. Now, what is parthenogenesis? See, parthenogenesis is the term most commonly seen in case of plants, but it is also seen in case of animals. Parthenogenesis means the development of an organism without fusion and fertilization of gamete. Okay, so here, as the male, uh, females, okay, females lays the egg, and these eggs, okay, and un without undergoing fertilization, they will develop the young ones. Okay, and the young ones which are developed are also females. That means there is the absence of male in this type of snakes okay all the snakes which are there and which will produce the other snakes will be the females only okay and that property is called as the thelitoki okay we can also call it as a thelitoki okay so thelitoki is a property where we can see females lays the egg which are unfertilized and will develop the young ones and these young ones will be again females so though they don't have any kind of male snakes into their uh, what do you say yes surrounding okay so that is about the different types of reptiles now we'll move to the another class that is class aves okay so you can pause the video and note down the points Let's see the another class that is class Aves. Okay, so the it is the class number third that is class Aves. Okay, so the animals that we are going to discuss under class Aves is the birds. Okay, so here we will start with the general characteristic features of the birds and then we will go with the certain examples of the birds ok. So, general characteristics ok, general characteristics. <coughs> now here the study of the study of birds is known as is known as ornithology ornithology ok 
okay so the study of birds is known as ornithology the next birds have birds have streamline streamline body okay so streamline body in the sense the anterior part that is the beak part as well as the tail part it is narrower okay so that is called streamline body as they have to move very fast through the wind so they have to uh, have such a body which can uh, move faster in that particular wind okay if the wind is in opposite direction also they can move it so they have to be a narrower at the anterior part so what we are calling it is a streamline body okay we can also call it is a spindle shape spindle shaped okay the next they have exoskeleton they have exoskeleton made up of made up of feathers okay so exoskeleton is made up of feathers the next the four limbs the four limbs are modified modified into into wings okay so the four limbs are modified into wings and wings are used to take the flight okay the next except except sorry not except uh their skin is their skin is dry and glandular okay their skin is dry and glandular that means there is a uh, absence of glands but there is a single gland that is a, there is a exception okay except except preen or oil gland okay preen or oil gland which is present near the tail region and what is the function of this oil gland see these birds they have a habit that they move their beak okay into different parts of the body that means what they do they will go at the surface of this oil gland and take the oil onto its beak and they will move this oil onto their feathers okay so when they are taking flight or some uh, due to some you know, due to some kind of activity if the water is been falling onto their body okay so it will help them to resist the water as they have to take the flight if water is been uh, present on their feathers or the water, water is been found in their feathers what will happen their body weight will increase so this oil gland or the oil helps to uh, retain the water from the body okay so that is the uh, uh, function of the oil gland or the preen glands the next endoskeleton okay endoskeleton sorry the endoskeleton is bony endoskeleton is bony that means see they consist of the bones okay that is the endoskeleton okay but the bones are pneumatic okay that is light bones are there or they are the hollow bones you can say as these animals are adapted to take flight they are adapted to fly so if the bones are dense they are unable to take the flight okay so that is can that kind of uh, endoskeleton can be seen in case of the birds okay then the sternum 
the sternum is the sternum is killed now what is mean by killed see sternum it is the part which is present in the breast region or the chest region okay and this sternum is a bone basically so this bone in case of the birds it is v shaped okay it is v shaped and uh, as it is v shaped so it is compressed okay from this part as there is a addition or there will be attachment of the flight muscles to this part okay so what it is compressed in the v shape okay and that compression is called as the nilled okay so sorry killed that part is called as a killed the next the hind limbs the hind limbs okay the hind limbs are modified are modified for perching perching means it is like holding a grip over any kind of branch of the tree or any kind of wire also okay so they have a grip over there so most of the fingers they are in the front and the one finger is the end or the back side so when they form a grip over any kind of uh, what we say branch or any kind of what we say uh, wire or anything okay so that uh, particular gripping is referred as a perching okay so hind limbs they are modified for formation of a grip the next let's discuss about another thing that is the digestive system okay so digestive system is it is well developed it is well developed okay they have they have beak okay without beak without teeth so the teeth are absent in case of these birds okay they are toothless but they have the beak okay so beak uh, what they do they take the food material with the help of beak and they directly swallow it okay the next another that is the circulatory system circulatory system okay the heart is four chambered heart is four chambered okay so that means they are response they can regulate the double complete circulation so circulation is circulation is complete double circulation okay or circulation is complete double type okay that means there will be uh, different passage for uh, deoxygenated blood and different passes for the oxygenated blood okay so that is how the circulatory system can be seen in case of the birds apart from this we are going to discuss some more points again so you can pause the video and note down the points okay then another point that is the nervous system nervous system now the nervous system is well developed okay so nervous system in case of the birds is well developed 
okay they have they have keen sight keen sight okay so what is the purpose of keen sight as they keep their eye on to the prey from very top so they have a keen vision okay or a quite good vision okay so they have keen sight the next but they have keen sight but the sense they have very less sense okay lens oh sorry they have keen sight but but weak smelling sense okay they have keen sight but weak smelling sense okay so that is about the uh, nervous system then apart from this we will discuss about the excretory system excretory system so what we will see in the excretory system is they have they have kidneys they have kidneys but but to minimize to minimize loss of water loss of water and energy and energy Okay. They are releasing uric acid as nitrogenous waste material. So what? what is the uh, special characteristic in the excretory system they are uricotelic okay you can write they are uricotelic that means they eliminate the nitrogenous waste material in the form of uric acid okay and why it is to minimize the loss of water and energy as they can utilize this energy for taking a flight okay or to perform various metabolic functions again so the excretory material which is released it is in the form of uric acid okay so that is how the excretory system is been seen in case of these animals then apart from this we will discuss about the reproductive system okay we will discuss about the reproductive system so when we talk of the reproductive system they are they are oviparous that means they lays the egg okay so these animals generally lays the eggs so what they are called as the oviparous okay the eggs are eggs are polylecithal polylecithal and and cladiac or cladioc okay that means what polylecithal means they have sufficient yolk and cladioc means they have self sufficient egg okay they have self sufficient egg with protective layer okay so it consists of the protective layer and this consists of the sufficient yolk okay so next in them or in birds right ovary right ovary and oviduct 
आर वेस्टिजियल दैट मींस ओनली द लेफ्ट पार्ट ऑफ द ओवरी और द लेफ्ट ओवरी एंड लेफ्ट ओविडक दैट इज फेलोपियन ट्यूब आर फंक्शनल ओके सो फ्रॉम ओनली वन ओवरी दे कैन प्रोड्यूस द एग्स बट हियर राइट ओवरी एंड राइट व्हाट यू से ओविडक इट इज वेस्टिजियल व्हाई इट इज इट इज बिकॉज दे टेक अप द फ्लाइट ओके द नेक्स्ट after hatching after hatching the young ones okay the young ones can be of two categories okay after hatching the young ones can be of two categories okay so what are these two categories like one which is called the nidifogus nidifogus and another one is called as the nidicolus now what is mean by nidifogus see the young ones which are born under this category okay they can walk readily okay their body is covered with the feathers and they can walk readily example you can take the chick okay the next in nidicolus you can take the example that the uh, birds which are formed or birds of the young ones which are been taken place or uh, taken the birth they are without feathers even their eyes are closed and they are totally depend upon their parents okay so that is in the nidicolus okay so these are the some features about the nervous system excretory system and the reproductive system now let's see some more uh, characteristic features of this class apes okay so you can pause the video and note down the points if you have any kind of difficulty in understanding any point of this topic you can ask me or you can send me your doubts on the whatsapp okay now some few more characteristic feature of the birds birds are warm blooded warm blooded see until now the animals we have discussed they were poikilotherms or the cold blooded now the birds are warm blooded or they are also called homeotherms okay so they are capable of maintaining their own body temperature okay so this is the characteristic feature okay the next respiration okay so respiration in case of birds okay respiration in birds is through lungs okay this through lungs that is called pulmonary okay pulmonary so such a respiration can be seen in case of birds and the lungs lungs have have air sacs air sacs okay air sacs which help in which helps in double respiration double respiration okay so lungs of the birds they consist of air sacs so this air sacs help in the double respiration okay the next the air sacs the air sacs also 
acts as cooling structures cooling structures okay so as they take the flight the body temperature rises so this uh, air sacs will act as a cooling structures okay so this is about the and uh, in nervous system again i would like to add point the birds the birds have 12 pairs of 12 pairs of cranial nerve cranial nerves okay and uh, about one more point about uh, which is associated with the nervous system they have the sensing organ sensing organ okay so sensing organ it is seen in middle ear middle ear okay and uh, which is uh, having in middle ear having only one one ear ossicle ear ossicle that means single bone is there which is called as the steps okay which is called as a step so that is the sensing organ which is found in the birds okay then birds are birds are also birds are also called as glorified reptiles glorified reptiles okay why we are calling them as a glorified reptiles because the birds they are been evolved by the uh, reptiles only and one of the such evidence we have the archaeopteryx now next that we are going to discuss about some uh, examples in the class apes okay so i'll rub this and uh, you can note down by pausing the video So let's see the examples. So the first example that we are going to discuss is the ostrich. Okay. So ostrich, it is a bird. Okay. It is the largest bird you can see. And this orchi, uh, ostrich bird is of two types. Okay. It is of two types. That is, one is called Okay, you can write here R of two types. One is called the Strutio, Strutio, and another one is called the Rhea. Okay, so these are the two different birds of ostrich. So let's discuss about this Tutio first and then we'll move to the Rhea. Okay. So we are going to discuss about this Tutio. So let's see the characteristics of this Tutio. These are these are largest birds. Largest birds. Okay. So this Tutio are the largest birds. Then next they are 7 to 8 feet. 7 to 8 feet long. Okay. So their height is 7 to 8 feet. That much bigger they are. The next, they lay or lays largest eggs. Largest eggs. Okay. They are polygamous. Poly. Gamus. 
polygamous means what see one male it is uh, mating with many females that type of property is called polygamous okay so one male copulate with many females that is called polygamous the next males are males are responsible or males uh, what they do they males incubate the eggs that means they take care of the eggs until they uh, develop into the young ones okay or the young ones are developed then next males have penis for copulation okay so males have penis for copulation okay the next now where exactly these are found these are okay these birds they are found they are found in africa and or uh, they are found in deserts of africa they are found in deserts of africa and arabia okay so such ostrich they are found in the deserts of africa and arabia the next another type of ostrich that was rhea okay another type of ostrich was the rhea it is the only bird okay it is the only bird which has which has urinary bladder urinary bladder okay and they are commonly found all over the world so generally this totio type they are found in the deserts of africa and the arabia so this is about the ostrich okay the next another example that we are going to discuss is the columba columba livia columba livia which is also referred as blue knock pigeon okay so your blue knock pigeon it is used as used as messenger okay as you can see in this uh, birds we can see they have a sharp memory once they uh, look after a particular image or look after a particular place they will uh, remain uh, they can uh, they will never forget this place or that image okay so what they are used as messengers okay the next the males have males have sheen sheen means the body is having a shiny texture okay so the body shines and that is a kind of attractive part in these birds the next they produce they produce a secretion they produce a secretion okay called called the pigeon's milk pigeons milk and which is used to feed the young ones okay the next another example that we are going to discuss is here okay is quail so i'll rub this okay so the another example that is the third example is Eudenamis. Eudenamis. 
which is commonly called as the quail or cuckoo bird cuckoo bird okay so eudynamus or eudynamis now these birds are these birds are well known okay well known for for nest parasitism parasitism okay so what is that nest parasitism means they lay their eggs within the nest of the crow and the eggs of the quail as well as the crow they are similar so until the eggs they are developed okay or they will uh, develop into the young ones they are been hatched under the observation of the crow and that is called as the nest parasitism okay or the brood parasitism this is also term and it is a kind of interaction okay so this is seen in case of the quail and another example that we are going to discuss is the that is the avo cristatus cristatus that is called peacock okay so peacock it is a national bird or the it is a national bird of india here we can see the sexual dimorphism that is the males and females are different and males have males have sheen okay and beautiful beautiful tail okay means at the tail we can see the presence of feathers okay that is beautiful tails and males have sheen that means the body it is shiny and it is more attractive okay so this is about the different types of birds okay uh, and their characteristic features okay so i hope you have understood the class aims which is very easy to understand okay just what you have to do is to revise the points if you have any kind of difficulty in understanding any of these terms then you can ask me on to the whatsapp till then thank you